Geraniol actually contributes to many of the fruit flavors that you know and love. From blackberries to lemons, Geraniol has a hand in the flavor. Welcome to Tur Tur Talk Thursday. I am your host, Adilgen Dabber. I am a cannabis enthusiast, patient, and product reviewer. And this is the weekly show where I break down terpenes in an easily digestible way. I explain what they do and hopefully teach you something new. I never thought terpenes played a role in your cannabis experience until I started noticing the different effects from different terpene profiles and different strains on myself. And I started doing some research on them and I began to give them a little bit more credit. If you would like to see a particular terpene covered in the show, leave it down in the comments or check out this playlist right here because I might have already covered it in a previous Terp Talk Thursday. So let me tell you a little bit about terpenes. Terpenes are responsible for making your cannabis smell like a bouquet covered in diesel fuel or like a musky, funky basement from the 70s. Terpenes are the chemicals that give almost every single thing we eat and drink its own particular smell and taste, and they're also the chemicals that give every single strain of cannabis its own unique smell and taste. Since our sense of smell is connected to our brain's memory and emotion centers, terpenes actually play a larger role in your daily life than you might think in little ways that you might not have ever even noticed before. A lot of terpenes are actually used in aromatherapy because of the benefits and the effects that they give to the human body. Some are familiar and easy to imagine, like geraniol, the geranium terpene. Geraniol is a monoterpene and a form of alcohol, but not the kind of alcohol that you'd want to drink. Monoterpenes are important ingredients in cosmetics, food flavorings, cleaning products, and most importantly for us, cannabis. Geraniol is not a terpene I had never even heard of before doing research for this video, even while working in the cannabis industry. It just doesn't have the star power like limonene or myrcene does to become as popular as those terpenes. So let's change that here. Even though you may have never heard of geraniol before, you have definitely smelled or tasted it before in your life. It's part of what gives geraniums and roses their famous smells. It's actually a primary component in rose oil, palmarosa oil, and citronella oil. And yes, that's citronella just like the mosquito repellent. Geraniol candles repelled mosquitoes and sandflies up to five times more effectively than citronella candles did, and up to two times more effectively than linalool candles did. And this shows us that it's a great insect repellent. Geraniol is actually the source of a couple other terpenes and is responsible for them forming. Myrcene and osamine are actually formed by the dehydration and isomerization of geraniol. Isomerization just means that one compound can transform into other similar compounds. The characteristic aromas and flavors of geraniol are rose-like, sweet, slightly citrusy, but with very diesel and gassy fuel undertones. The more subtle smells and flavors produced by geraniol make it perfect for perfumes and lotions, and it's even used in some food flavorings. Geraniol actually contributes to many of the fruit flavors that you know and love. From blackberries to lemons, geraniol has a hand in the flavor. It can also be found in peaches, blueberry, lemongrass, and roses. Something that you may find interesting is that geraniol is actually produced by honeybees. It's actually used as a way to communicate between bees in the same colony to mark nectar-bearing flowers. They also use it as a distinguishing signal to other bees of other colonies that this area is taken. And it's also used to mark the entrances to their own hives. Scientists showed the protective effects of geraniol on rat test subjects that suffered traumatic spinal injuries. Using the terpene, researchers actually suppressed inflammatory signaling pathways to reduce the rat's pain response. Plus, this study also showed that this terpene can reduce oxidative stress just like limonene does to help prevent tissue damage. Oxidative stress is actually said to cause disease and to make inflammation worse. The therapeutic effects of geraniol are surprising, so let's check them out. It was found to provide antioxidant effects, which can help reduce free radicals. Basically, the less free radicals in your body the less likely you are to develop certain cancers and other diseases. It even has anti-cancer properties specifically. In different experiments, geraniol was actually shown to sensitize cancer cells, helping them to respond to cancer treatments that they had been resistant to before. Geraniol is antibacterial, antimicrobial, and antifungal, which makes it very useful in treating certain bacterial and fungal infections. Geraniol was found to be an effective antibacterial and antifungal when put up against 18 varieties of bacteria and 12 varieties of fungi in one study. It's even toxic to E. coli and salmonella bacteria. It's anti-inflammatory and can help strengthen your body and immune system. It can help reduce the effects of arthritis by reducing swelling and discomfort in joints and by easing pain in muscles. Another study done on mice showed that geraniol was actually able to preserve the structure and function of nerve cells. It may even one day be used to treat conditions like neuropathy, which can cause weakness, numbness, and pain in the limbs. And finally, it showed antidepressant effects when given to mice that were placed in a chronic stress condition. It changed all of the behaviors that had only begun once the chronic stress model was introduced in the Experiment. Basically showing that the mice got depressed and it helped them be not depressed. Though it's only usually present in small amounts in cannabis, here are some strains that have high amounts of geraniol. Dutch Hawaiian, Purple Punch, Afghan, 
Master Kush, and Strawberry Diesel. There's no doubt that Geraniol offers a long list of benefits. It has anti-inflammatory properties, it's an antioxidant, it helps boost your immune system, it's a natural insect repellent, it helps cancer treatments by sensitizing cancer cells and making them vulnerable to the treatment again. And last but not least, Geraniol is antibacterial, antimicrobial, and antifungal, which is insanely impressive for any terpene. Try to find a strain high in Geraniol if you feel like you could benefit from any of these effects. Geraniol seems to show up most in strains that will help elevate your mood, relieve your pain, and help with your anxiety and general stress. This isn't officially medical advice or anything, this is just the things that I've learned from being a patient and working in the industry myself. Thank you for joining me for another Turf Talk Thursday, everybody. Again, if there's a terpene you would like me to cover in this show, leave it down in the comments or check out this playlist right here because I might have already covered it in a previous Turf Talk Thursday. If you learned something in this video, please share it with someone that you think could learn something from it too. Make sure you do some of the stuff on screen right now, like subscribing, hitting that little bell to keep up with all my weekly videos and also sharing commenting and all the other good stuff that keeps youtube's algorithm happy i now have a patreon so if that's something that interests you you can check it out pick one of the tiers and start checking out my behind the scenes stuff i now have a podcast called the dad who dab so check that out if you're interested in more long form content if you made it all the way to the end you're awesome and before you go just remember that even though today might be hard tomorrow will be worth it so take care of yourself thanks for watching and take it easy